Since the helicopter mod is buggy, everybody knows it, and I just made a 10 or 15 minute video going through all of those bugs and found it incredibly boring. So I'm going to summarize it as quickly as I can. The wheels don't touch the ground when you land until you cut your engine, you slide all over runways, there's a massive number of bugs when it comes to actually setting the controls for a joystick. Even without that, the controls are incredibly limited, both in joystick and mouse and keyboard. Way too limited for something as diverse as flying a helicopter in a video game. A lot of people have different preferences. Uh, the pilot kit gets assault rifles. Uh, I don't know, it's a copy-paste of the crewman. It should probably just have like a pistol and some smoke grenades. Anyway, the list goes on and on, and they're not very interesting to discuss. What is interesting to discuss is the flight model. Now there are some more bugs in there, some inaccuracies, you know, the helicopters will only ever really reach 100 knots, 110 knots, which isn't close to their top speeds. The rudder is painfully uh, ineffective, or at least the yaw control. There's stuff like that, which is all fixable and small and has been pointed out by other people. But I think there's a much, much bigger underlying problem but with the entire way that this is set up. And I don't think it's fixable, at least not with a massive rework. And I want to explain my reasoning and run it past you guys, because I really am theorizing at this point, but I feel like I'm correct. First, let me enter a hover. Now, back in V9, he had released the Helimon. And when he did, it was very, very simple. He had a vehicle, you know, the helicopter. It had a rotor, which, you know, moved it directly up, depending on how much collective was applied to it. And then he gave you some control over the attitude of the helicopter. So you could increase your collective to go up, you could nose down to go forward. It worked basically like a very, very rudimentary system for a helicopter. And then from there he added on different things. He changed uh, the, the amount of control you had over the actual cabin, depending on things like the air moving over it, or your attitude, or where you're at, you know, stuff like that. He made it more realistic as he went along. And I feel like OWI, when they made this, started from a completely different perspective. And it's, it's really showing in the flight model. These things fly like VTOL jets. I feel like there's two modes. There's a hover mode, where everything's dampened, like this. And then there's your forward mode. And I feel like there's a lot of invisible forces acting on everything that feel counterintuitive and aren't really physics-based. For example, my collective feels like an altitude management system. It does not feel like the force being put out by my propeller getting tilted to a downward angle when I drop my nose is what's responsible for me building my speed. It doesn't feel like that at all. Oh, forgot about this. What it feels like is that my collective is controlling my altitude and possibly has some effect on my speed when I'm tilted. But for the most part, there's an invis invisible speed multiplier that is taking something into consideration. Namely, I think the angle that my nose is at, and possibly my speed that I already have going, and then is applying a forward motion. Now, the proof that I have for this, if you can call it proof, is what everybody's talking about with, uh, what was the word they kept using? Not rubber banding, but um, slingshotting. Everybody's talking about slingshotting while landing. You can see it in all of the uh, pre-release footage, and what I initially thought it was was a botched attempt at implementing ground effect. I thought that when helicopters were getting too close to the ground like this, the ground effect was having unforeseen effects on their helicopter, causing them to kinda gain speed or just not be in complete control. I do not think that's the case anymore. What I think is the case is that there is that invisible speed multiplier getting in the way of things. Even if they're at full, somewhat low collective, the little adjustments they make with their nose, like this, and this, are activating way more forward and backward speed than they intended. Look how much that launched me, tilting back that little. That's pretty crazy. So if you're trying to land and you're making fine adjustments, or say I undershot my LZ and I'm actually trying to get onto that road, and I just give it a little bit of nose down, oh shit, okay, whoa, that was way too much, so now I need to give it less collective to avoid gaining altitude, but oh, tilting gave me a ton of backwards momentum, so now I need to increase my collective to avoid tail striking, and this is just an endless feedback loop. You'll see this feedback loop even with proper flight models and inexperienced pilots, where they're not capable of very finely correcting their uh, their inputs, 
but this isn't that. This is the case of the inputs are being multiplied to unreasonable levels. I'm a fairly experienced pilot. I can normally go into a hover or a landing very easily, and I've been struggling with this flight model because if I'm not dead on, and I have to make an adjustment midway through, I have to take into account that dipping my nose 10 degrees is going to activate my jet thrusters and send me into fucking light year speed. Or, I don't know, whatever, whatever everyone's watching these days. And then I have to compensate for that without overcorrecting, which becomes increasingly difficult the faster you get. There are other little bits of evidence that support that there's this, quote, flight path, unquote. Like, for example, I can rotate like this, and then casually rotate back. I lost a little bit of altitude, but in real life I would have been in the dirt there. I've lost everything giving me lift. But did I? In the mod? No. Somehow I was still maintaining a little bit of lift. I didn't just fall out of the sky. It's possible that I'm wrong and that this is just a um, an attempt at generating lift by moving forward, which is a thing in helicopters. The faster you're going, you'll get a little bit of lift from the helicopter itself, especially if you're pulling up. It might just be that, but it's set to the y-axis of the actual map and it's not actually relative to where I'd rotate, so the lift doesn't start lifting me towards my propellers here, or sorry, my rotors. It just continues to lift me up towards the sky because it's bound to the map or something. I don't know. That's a possibility. But I think the greater possibility is just ultimately that these control my elevation, and that 100% collective means that I'm not really going to drop while I'm in that maneuver until the, the sideways effects start kind of killing that forward momentum or something changes, because I am starting to lose a little bit of altitude. But it just feels like I'm locked in place, like I have this predetermined flight path and I'm on rails, and all of the controls I manipulate are manipulating forces that are then acting on my helicopter rather than manipulating my helicopter, which then provides forces through the uh, rotor. Anyway, I might be rambling, this might not make a ton of sense, it just... It feels like an old PS2 game, where you didn't have a physics engine. There was no way to create two physical items that then had certain amounts of energy, or certain amounts of weight, that then interacted with an environment, and instead everything was pixels that were moved around to represent how they would look in real life, where physics applies. Those are the vibes I'm getting from this, and ultimately I don't think it's fixable. I think it's tweakable. I think they've gotten it to the point where it behaves like a helicopter in most predictable situations, at least if they take down the multiplier that starts causing it to slingshot around, like they have it to the point where it feels more or less right. But, I mean, there are so many things that you can't do. You can't do crazy maneuvers. If you try to rotate more than 90 degrees, you'll just lock. You'll just hit an invisible barrier. In fact, I'll do it right now. I'll crash because of it. But, I can't go any higher than 90 degrees. And now I'm dead. Anyway, the point is, you're locked into this idea that you're going to take off, move there, maybe turn, maybe bank a little, and then land there. You don't have any freedom. You don't have any ability to use your helicopter as what it is at its core, you know? A big-ass rotor with some weight underneath it. You don't get that potential. Anyway, all of this can be tweaked. All of this can be changed, and they can adjust those multipliers to the point where it feels a little bit more realistic, and it feels easier to land, and you're not getting those multipliers fucking with people on final approach. But it's never going to feel as realistic, and it's never going to be as authentic as if it was purely physics-based, as if all of the movements of the helicopter were controlled by the attitude of the helicopter, not by invisible forces acting on the helicopter. And ultimately, there will always be a way to break this and to make it feel arcadey if you start getting adventurous enough and trying to do tricks and trying to do things that you could do in real helicopters. I think it's too late to change the overall system. I don't think they'll go back and do what the Helimod did. But um, it's, it's disappointing that we're seeing kind of band-aids put onto a fundamentally imperfect system from this point on rather than developing a system that could be fundamentally perfect. 
anyway, it's difficult to say how to feel about this because, I mean, technically they can edit these parameters all they want and get it to a point where it feels almost natural. I just don't see why they didn't make it natural to start, why they had to add these artificial bits to it that will always make it feel less authentic, less like you're in control of a machine and more like you're politely requesting the elements around you to bend you to their will. I could be wrong about the entire thing, honestly. I could be misreading this, but it really is what it feels like, and it's a shame because... I'm not trying to stir the pot or anything here, but Heed has a lot of modding experience with these helicopters, and he made a very good flight model, and his only limitations were game engine stuff, you know, there was stuttering past a certain point, there was stuttering past a certain ping, there were a lot of weapons and stuff that he had to, you know, work around because it was a mod. And OWI has the power to fix all of those things, and then on the flip side, OWI did fix these things with this mod, um, the animations are good, the effects are good, it's smooth, uh, you don't get any input lag. All of that's done really well, but then their flight model is significantly worse than Heed's. And <laughs> I was scrolling through the subreddit, or sorry, the um, Discord page for the mod, and I saw this. And like I said, I'm not really trying to stir the pot here and cause some drama, but I was very, very sad to see that post, because now I cannot help but imagine how good it would have been if the two things could have come together and just worked like we all imagined they would. Anyway, that is all for this video. Um, I will possibly be working on something to do with the meta of squad leading and stuff, with helicopters being introduced and some tactics and stuff. I might be releasing something like that, so... You can stay tuned for that if you're looking for more helicopter content, but uh, for now, I'll see you guys later.